Hello, hello, and welcome once again to another Beatles program. It's a podcast that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show, or at least we try to make it one, uh, that is Beatles news-themed. What is going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise? I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, known for my syndicated radio program on the Beatles called Every Little Thing. And I'm being joined by the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, Steve Marinucci. Hi, everybody. Hi, Ken. Good on, to talk to you again. <laughs> why are you saying that? Because <laughs> it seems like we hadn't talked to each other in well over a week, but I guess I guess <laughs> we have. But we talk whatever. to each other every week. I we know. have to for this show. We're so bu- we're so busy though between you know between shows. My God, that's so true. many things are happening as as evidenced by this show. Yeah, and it's just amazing for people who actually say to me, "What could be going on in the world of the Beatles?" I know, you know and. All they got to do is look at what you are writing about every day, and it's it's mind-boggling, really. It never stops. That's what's really. I mean, even when I think I'm going to have a slow day, it's usually not a slow day. I mean, between Beatles stuff and other stuff, but usually Beatles stuff. I mean, I just got through writing that uh, a little story on that uh, Heart of the Country video that showed up. Oh yeah, uh, online. I just got through with that. Um, well, that was a nice finally, surprise. That finally got ex- fully explained. Yeah. Why don't we tell the folks what that is, anyway? That uh, About a week or so ago on YouTube, a video of, Heart of, the Con- of Paul and Linda's Heart of the Country showed up, but it was a different version of the song. It wasn't the same song. And um, as it turns out, the video is um, part of a campaign by Linda McCartney Foods for a new line of uh, vegetarian meals that they're putting out in England. Unfortunately, yeah. they're not available here. But the interesting thing about the video is, number one, it's animated. Number two, Linda is seen in it as our members of the family. And it's voiced, uh, the narrator is uh, Elvis Costello, who himself is a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a cute little it's a cute little video. I just wrote about it. It's uh, on the Paul McCartney Examiner site with the video. And you can you can see it and and you know and comment it on it, but it's just it was just kind of a cool thing. They kind of threw it out there and nobody knew what was going on. And I made some inquiries and and I was told you'll find out soon enough. And they finally came out with the information a few days ago on the video itself. But then um, the company that produces the meals in England, which is Hain, um, uh, and they. They were actually based in in America. Mm-hmm. Um, finally announced today their end of it, and, uh, but it's too bad that uh, you know it's too bad uh, Lynn McCartney Foods is not here, and it used to be for anyone who remembers that. But uh, they're not here now; they're just only in England, and that's too that's kind of a shame actually, because we could sure use that kind of stuff. She was such a pioneer, right? And what's sad is again that. The, the foods aren't available in America, and um, that so kind that, of thing. That also means that you won't see this ad on television here. Well, you can uh, you can at least see it on YouTube. They were at least nice enough to give it to YouTube, and everybody can see it. True. But yeah, you're right. We're not going to see it on TV. And actually, the first time that we heard about it, it was without the Elvis Costello voiceover. It was just the the pure song with the video. Oh, okay. See, I didn't. At least really, I did. I didn't really look at it. Yeah. At that point, really? Okay. Well, the the version I have has the voiceover. So right, and it's just nice to hear Paul sing that song again. Yeah, you know, every, everybody never... was kind of thinking it was an outtake, but it's not really an outtake, and it was p- produced by Mark Ronson also. Right, who is supposed to be so we hear working on Paul's new album, which yes. actually, I've, well, you know, I was thinking about that, and this could actually be what Ronson was kind of working on. So. But we'll see. You know, you never know. Um, Things could change on a dime yes. <laughs> when it comes to news. Yes, that's definitely true. So for our show today, I thought that we'd talk about Peter Asher because for several years now, he's put together this show of his, which the actual title is Peter Asher, A Musical Memoir of the 60s and Beyond. And I've seen this show several times. As have, did, as have I. He did a show a few years back at the Iridium Jazz Club in New York City, which is where I first saw it. He was also a guest at the Festival of Beatles Fans 
last year where he did the same thing. And I just saw him again at the Iridium Jazz Club. Uh, he did two shows on last uh, Sunday, which was the 20th of January, and I was at the afternoon show. And so, I've, 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 seen him, I've seen him do it um, in Southern California. I've seen him do it in San Francisco a couple of times. So he's done it, he's done it everywhere. Um, and he's always kind of adding things to it here and there. Uh, the last time I saw it, he had added the uh, song he does in Madagascar 3. He actually was doing he actually showed the song before the movie came out, hmm. which was really kind of cool. Because right. well, it's a great it's a great little song. Yeah, we should actually explain to everybody who's never seen Peter Asher for this show what it's all about. And the way that I kind of describe it is that it's sort of like a storyteller's type of show. Mm -hmm. Because he walks you through his entire career going back to the Peter and Gordon days. Uh, becoming the head of uh, A&R at Apple Records. He talks about that, helping to launch the career of James Taylor, uh, working as a producer for James and Linda Ronstadt and a few other people that he's produced along the years, and um, even going into the Grammy Awards that he's received through the years. And he mixes his own uh, storytelling with videos and photos, and it really is uh, you know, a wonderful show to present. It's, and it's ever evolving. I mean, uh, like I said, he the last time I saw it, he had the Madagascar, Madagascar three song "Love Always Comes as a Surprise." He's done, you know, various little things. He's changed the songs. He did. I think the first time I saw it, he did. I want to hold your hand. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I don't remember that. Because um, he talked about at the end of the show, he talked about being there um, when they were when John and Paul were in his basement playing the, um, working it out on the piano, and, and I mean, it, you know, he's done all, they've, it's an ever-evolving show, and the latest evolution really got a lot of attention, and there's... And a lot of it is because of you, <laughs> okay. because you publicized this, and uh, yeah, why don't you tell the folks what this was all about? Every, there's been speculation for years that there is a demo of World Without Love from a Beatle related demo of World Without Love. And it's never surfaced until now. Mm -hmm. And since this came out, um, Peter has talked about it. He did a lengthy interview with Rolling Stone about it. I got him on the phone last Friday. I literally had just a couple of minutes to talk to him. Not his fault, my fault, because um, I was. I, I, I was on my way out the door, and I had to, and I really couldn't stick around. Um, but we talked for a, a few minutes about where this came from, and he said, "I was just trying to sort out some stuff in various old boxes of files in a box containing a bunch of DAT tapes. What I realized, some were old reel-to-reel -reel tapes I had transferred, the analog tapes to DAT. There were various things from that area, some radio shows I recorded." And he said, then I remembered I'd, he'd made a quick tape of The World Without Love to make sure he had a copy. And what was interesting, and I don't know that Rolling Stone ever mentioned this, was this is only about 20 seconds long. That's right. And yeah, I was just going to say, you can, you can confirm that. Mm -hmm. um, I have not heard this, um, so you've heard it, and I haven't. Um, and I'm curious now, give us a little more description on it and what, what it was. Well, it was, un unfortunately, it was that short. It was only the first verse of the song. Mm -hmm. It was Paul on acoustic guitar singing along with it. And he actually changed one of the words, which I can't remember oh, at no. this moment. Yeah, it was... Uh, well, I realize this is, this is monumental now. This is going to... Uh, if he changed one of the words, this is, this is monumental. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. I highly doubt it. It was just one word. That's all it was. But, but you I, know I, that's going to be overanalyzed. It's going to be analyzed. That's gonna that's gonna make somebody a story, maybe even me. <laughs> but you and I have actually um, had the privilege of interviewing Peter several times. In yes. fact, one time I interviewed him with Gordon, and this was right before the uh, benefit for Mike Smith okay. at BB King's in New York City. Okay. And I know that from the few interviews that I've done, and certainly the ones that you've done, I always make sure that I ask that question several times. 
were there demos for all the songs? And I think Paul, I, I, I don't know that I ask him that every time, but I do remember the first time I interviewed him, which was a lengthy interview. Um, I think I did ask him that. And yeah. I, and I, you know, I believe he basically said no. But he just discovered, this is something he had just discovered. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this was pulled, it's not something that he's had, you know, according to the information that, that he's said, that he's had around that he did not know about. I mean, he, he thought there was something, you know, he thought it may have been re- recorded, I think, but he just didn't, he, he the tape had gotten lost or whatever. But right. It has been found. But the few times that I interviewed him, he brought he brought up A World Without Love, but he did say that for the other songs that Paul wrote for the for Peter and Gordon, Nobody I Know, I Don't Want to See You Again, and Woman, that there were no demos to his mm-hmm. memory. So this is all that we have. Um, I kind of wish that it was longer, but um, it still is part of history. So it's, it's, so it's always fascinating to hear demos of songs that the Beatles gave away to other people. And it's not going to get released according to, well... Peter's not going to release it. Sure, certainly Paul could release it if he wanted to or do something with it. But Well, he should do it live. <laughs> well, I mean, because, I mean, these demo, people are fascinated by these demos, and it's gonna, it, it is kind of a, 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 a Beatle-related thing. So, I, I mean, I would think that, sure, if we can get it released, it'll be great. But the question is whether Paul will actually do it, or, or Peter, for that matter. Yeah, and also one of the things that's happened in recent years is that there are certain bands like Apple Jam, which is a band that you've written about in right. Beatles Examiner, and they'll take a lot of these songs that John and Paul wrote for other artists and they'll record it as if the Beatles had done it. What mm-hmm. would it sound like if the Beatles did it? So there is that kind of a craving, a kind of a demand for what would it have sounded like if the Beatles had done these songs. Right. And we have been lucky enough to hear through the years, like uh, the Lennon demo, the, the acoustic guitar de- demo for bad to me right um and also if you if you look on youtube there's a demo that john made of him on the piano doing i'm in love which is very interesting so mm-hmm. it's more than a minute long but it's fascinating to to hear a lot of these these demos of songs that the beatles gave to other people well even i mean for that matter uh, listen look up the demos for free as a bird and real love and how, how much different they are than what the beatles did sure those are those are interesting too, but or something but, like goodbye, you know, Paul's demo for that. Mm-hmm. So essentially, what you're saying is the the melody on World Without Love was the same. There was exactly no the same, yeah. Same tempo and everything like that. Pretty much, very mid tempo. I'm just it's, kind of surprised that we didn't get the second verse of the song. Another thing for people who don't know the history of the song, uh, when Paul played it for for. Uh, for Peter, mm-hmm. I don't know if it was with Gordon, he hadn't finished the song at that point. It was only after Peter and Gordon had gotten a record contract that Peter remembered the song that Paul had played for him and asked him to, to write a bridge in there, which he did at the last minute. Right. Paul um, And Peter told him, uh, that's the story that Peter has repeated many times. He told me that, too, because uh, I, I, a, a I did a story especially on the origin of World Without Love, and he specifically said that, that they got the, the song after he, they got the record contract. One thing that happened that day was Peter showed me the actual lyric sheet that he shows in the show, but he had he actually showed me the lyric sheet and I, and, and that went in Paul's handwriting, and I was just, it was like, oh my God. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so he saved that. He actually saved that it yes, wasn't a did. copy; it was the actual paper. I believe it was the. He told me it was the actual paper, and um, and yep, he, he yeah he indicated it was the actual the actual paper. Wow, I'm glad he kept it. All I'm these glad years. he did too. And and you know, like I said, seeing it right in front of me kind of gave me the chills just to see it. You know, see Paul's handwriting, and to see the the, the familiar song that was just kind of amazing. It was yeah, really amazing. And also, it's interesting just to bring up the fact that when you study the songs that the Beatles gave away to other artists, you have songs that were specifically written with that artist in mind, and then you've also got songs that were just laying around that the Beatles didn't think they wanted to do for themselves. And John apparently didn't really want to do 
a world without love. And Peter, in fact, has said, I think it was in your article, that he believes that Paul offered a, a world without love to Billy J. Kramer first. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he said, he, well, he said, I, he used the word I believe. He said um, that he had uh, offered it to Billy J., um, who apparently, who turned it down. Yeah. Which, actually, I think, I think Billy J. would have done a great job with that. Mm. I, that's kind of, kind of interesting that Billy J. turned it down. I know and, Billy, and another yeah. thing too is that that Peter and Gordon actually started out as kind of a folk group, and he, um, it, when I interviewed him, he mentioned that Five Hundred Miles was their audition song, and right. if you've heard their version of Five Hundred Miles, it's very much, and he describes it like an English version of Peter Paul and Mary or the Kinks and Trio. I think Peter Paul and Mary is a more accurate description, yeah. because yes, they did, they definitely did. And um, the the wonderful thing, though, about the or about even early Peter and Gordon even doing that folk stuff, is how lush their sound was, hmm. and that just kind of uh, is just amazing. Even in the sh- in the show, where, and I don't know if I should give this away or not, for those of you that have not seen it, but there is a point in the show where there is some Peter and Gordon singing, and I maybe I shouldn't go any further than that for those of you that haven't seen it, but that is just, e- even, that point in the show is just absolutely stunning. It's very when emotional. He, when he does that. And, yeah. um It's really, it's one of the highlights of the show, and it's, it's if you have not seen Peter's show, you really need to see it. It's just, it's really enjoyable. What we probably should say, without giving away too much, is that there are videos of Peter and Gordon on stage, and what they do kind of in a way to really represent Gordon in the show itself, Mm -hmm. is they play, the band plays to Gordon's vocal. Right. So there's a few songs that they do that to. So Peter's harmonizing with Gordon, and we're hearing that in the audience. Right. And it's really, it's really, the first time I heard it, it was just almost miraculous how good it sounded you know how how close it sounded to six, to to their sound in sixty four It was just kind of amazing yeah i really i was i was floored by that the first time I saw it right, and every time I've seen it since it's kind of, it's you know you just kind of sit there and go, Oh my, <laughs> it really is so it again, if you have not seen Peter's show and you can and it's coming to your town, make sure you catch it. It's well worth seeing right well, Peter does mention during the show, some of the TV programs that they were on in the 60s, and you do get a few clips of them. One's on Hullabaloo. Right. And the other, well, no, he talked about being on, yes, he did show it, the Red Skelton show. And I think he, doesn't he also talk about Ed Sullivan? He does talk about Ed Sullivan, but I don't believe you see any film clip from that show with, with Ed Sullivan. Okay. So it's really a very worthwhile show. And just to finish that train of thought about the songs that the Beatles gave away, so some some of our listeners may not know this or not, but obviously A World Without Love was a song that was not written with Peter and Gordon in mind, but the other three songs that Paul wrote for Peter and Gordon were. Mm-hmm. So there's a difference right there. Right. But, um, you know, it's a part of history, just like anything the Beatles have ever done. <laughs> You know, and something like this that we'd never heard before, it's its really, um, you know, it was a thrill to actually witness this for the first time. And I'm sure it's going to be, well, it should be uh, a permanent part of his shows. And you're saying, as, as you were before, that he's changing his shows around. One of the things that he added was talking about the Buddy Holly compilation that he helped put together and, right. the, and the concert. That's now in the show. And we all know that um, one of the songs from that compilation was the cover that Ringo did of Think It Over, which Peter produced. So he also brings up what he's doing today, and uh, it just tells you what an extraordinary career this man has had. And he's he's really keeping busy. This is just something that he does in between all of his other work. Right. So, I mean, uh, he's been involved with, well, I mentioned Madagascar. He's been doing film scores with Hans Zimmer, uh, the guy who um, is known for Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been... He's been just, I mean, it's, uh, he's been working with um, Rodrigo and Gabriella. Kind of, they're kind of like a very strong flamenco gu- uh, guitar group uh, from Cuba. Um, if you haven't heard them, um, re- they're really good. I mean, they're, they're, he's really, he 
told me, you know, when I talked to him one time, how much he really, really likes what they do, and he's really supportive of them. Hmm. So they're, you know, somebody else that's really that's really special, um, and that he's involved with. Well, you just mentioned Hans Zimmer, and we can say, because he, he did announce this at the show, that he's working on the new uh, score for the next Superman film. No, see, there's something I didn't know. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, and do you know about the new Elton John project? Nope. Well, there's, I can I can tell the folks about this, too. <laughs> there's a couple of, yeah, there's a couple of things. I, like I said, when I talked to him... Uh, Last week, I really didn't have as much time to talk to him as I really wanted to, yeah. especially about this, and I was really disappointed. And but uh, I know I'll get to talk to him again, and, and we can bring we can bring that up. Okay. And the, and one of the things that happened actually when uh, when I saw him the first time in San Francisco was that uh, people were showing up, uh, celebrities showed up at his show. Hmm. The night I wasn't there, Robin Williams showed up. The night I was there. Linda Ronstadt was there. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, it was very nice to see her. And uh, and um, I actually got to take a picture of her. My camera failed me, but I took. <laughs> I managed to. They were very patient and very nice, and uh, and I got the picture. But uh, that was very cool to see to see Linda there. Well, at this particular show at the Iridium, um, Denny Lane showed up. Ah, I heard. You know, I heard about that. Well, the did, thing is, did, did Denny Lane not play with him? Yeah, well, he did. The, okay. He did go now on stage. Ah, okay. The thing is that some of the musicians that are in Peter's band are the same musicians that Denny's using. Oh, ah, okay. And Denny's been doing shows locally here. He just did one in New Jersey, and I know he's got one coming up in New Hampshire. But he just happened to be in town, so perfect opportunity. And also, Kate Taylor was on stage with James. Now, Kate Taylor, I talked to. Um, before that, before the show, mm -hmm. and I had interviewed her and and uh, Kate Taylor, of course, and Peter go way back because Kate Taylor uh, or uh, Peter produced her first album, Sister Kate. That's right. Way back when. In and fact, she, she did a song. She was really that. she was really thrilled about um, performing with him, and uh, that's how. What did she? Uh, she did two songs, correct? She did two songs, and uh, she did Country Comfort, which was from that album right. that Peter produced, uh, the Elton John song, Country mm -hmm. Comfort. And uh, they did It's In His Kiss as a duet, which Peter produced for Cher, her version of that. Oh, wow. So, mm -hmm. And since we just mentioned Elton John, <laughs> since I didn't get to finish what I was saying before about uh, Peter's new project with Elton John... Okay. Um, this year, in 2013, will mark the 40th anniversary of Goodbye Elbrook Road. So what they're going to do, what Elton has asked Peter to do, is to assemble a lot of new artists of today covering songs from Goodbye Elbrook Road, which Peter will produce. Wow. So uh, that'll be later in the year. Wow, that's, that's definitely new. I would guess it'll come out towards the end of the year because Goodbye Elbrook Road was a late 73 release. Sure. So, um, yeah. It just goes to show you how he's very much in demand. Yeah, you know? he, defi he definitely is. He definitely is. But it was, you know, if you can, if you, if you hear about Peter playing in your area, by all means, go see him. His because... website is um, www.peterashermusic.com, and that's where they keep the schedule for his tours. Okay. And, uh, so that's where you want to look up and see where he's going to be. Okay. Before we close, you just wanted to add one other news item that we just found out about in the last couple of days. And about the the rubber sole picture. Well, yeah. uh, it popped up. Uh, a picture popped up. Uh, I first saw it on Facebook. It apparently uh, it may have come from the Steve Hoffman Music Forum, which is if you're not there, is a good place to go uh, to be to read a lot of music scuttlebutt and information. But anyway, um, I had originally thought it was an outtake, but what it is is the uncut and un, uh, unmessed un, with. Uncropped. Uncropped and also unturned. So it's the straight cover photo from Rubber Soul. Which is actually shocking to watch. You know, yeah, it you're, is, you're... actually. And, and like I said, the first when I looked at it originally, I thought maybe it was a different version but looking at it again, somebody pointed out, no, 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 it's this, it's the photo just untouched, and it is. 
that's exactly what it is. It's a little longer, and there's a you can see something sticking off of John's uh, coat, I guess a thread, and um, it's a it's a great photo. It's a wonderful photo. Yeah, you can see their their full pose yes. as they were doing that. So it's just to see them standing up, to see all their clothes. You know, it's when you're so used to seeing just the headshots, mm-hmm. and you know, I love seeing this stuff. Yeah, especially I, I love I the too. the colors. You know how rich well, they are in, on rubber soles. So. The funny thing is that since the photo has turned up, it has become an incredible um, source of buzz mm. on Facebook. It's, it, I mean, everybody is talking about it. I wrote about it last night with not a lot of information, unfortunately, but I have been t- trying to track down some information, and hopefully um, by the time you see this show, I will have more. But I, I, I don't know. We'll see. But what's I mean, it's just amazing some of the stuff that, um, you know, things are still popping up, you know, years later, 50 years later. And like, we'll continue to. And we'll continue to. You know, it's, it's, it's really interesting when you've got that image burned into your brain of that album cover, as we have with all the Beatles album covers. Imagine if we saw with the Beatles, and it was of the four of them standing up, you know, instead of just the heads like that. It would be, it would be really fascinating to see something like that. Right, right. It, it, it sure would. And I mean, he uh, uh, in looking around last night, uh, Robert Freeman did put a little longer picture of that with the Beatles cover on his on the cover of one of his books. A private view, it was right. called. Yeah, right. But it's not really that much longer, and there really really isn't that much difference. But still, you know, that's those are those things are just fascinating when when these things happen. Right. Anyway, that wraps up our show this time, and if you would like to get in touch with us, you can write to us through our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com Thanks to Steve for that very long, long email address and uh maybe we'll change it someday. Some of you are probably getting tired from typing too many letters for that, but uh We'd love to hear your comments or suggestions for anything uh, that you'd like to hear us talk about news wise in the show. And if you want to get in touch with Steve, how can they do that? You can aside, get, fr- aside from our own email. Well, you can get in touch with me on Facebook under my name. I have my own little Facebook page, and I'm there relatively often. Uh, you can catch us. Um, you can catch me on Beals Examiner. You can catch me on examiner.com, actually, but you can catch me on Beals Examiner. Um, you can catch Ken at his website. Which is KenMichaelsRadio.com. Radio. Com. We're just we're all over the place. Where he's on Facebook too, under his under his name, but we're we're everywhere, <laughs> seemingly. <laughs> so we really appreciate all the letters that we've been getting so far, and we will consider every suggestion that that we get sent here. And uh, we want to thank all of you, and especially the folks at Fab Four Radio. Com for carrying the show. Thank and you. And thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time.